David in North Tonawanda, New York. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And today I'm going to do something really special. I'm going to cut the transitions extra active with the gold flash mirror for your Ray-Ban 3016 Club Master Color W0365, which is the classic black and gold in the 51 eye size. But first I want to give a shout out to his family business which is uh, Niagara Testing Metallurgical. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Metal, metallurgical. Niagara Testing Metallurgical. Now what they do is they use Magnaflux with iron shavings in it so that when you magnetize it, it will show pinholes or cracks in the weld. How did my high school guidance counselor not tell me about that? That sounds way cooler than what I'm doing. But let me get this done and I can go back to school and study that. So, um, I'm going to program the shape into the computer. You are Secret Agent 2342, or as I like to call it, um, installment 2342 of my 330 million volume series of making a pair of glasses for everyone in America. So stay tuned and watch all 330 million uh, episodes because something special is going to happen at the end. So let's go ahead and take the, everything out of the box again. The Ray-Ban 3016 Clubmaster, color W0365 in the 51 eye size. Take everything out of the packaging, packaging as Ray-Ban sends it to me. Your Italian leather Ray-Ban case. Your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth with a booklet for the icons. Because somewhere in here, your frame, aviator, the shooter, the outdoorsman, the wayfarer. Caravan, come on, Olympian, Ballarama, Club Master. There is your frame, that exact color. So, of course, it's got a few more. The Predator, the G15 lenses, all that other stuff. You're going to get all of that, but you didn't pay to see that. You paid to see this, the star of the show, the main attraction. It comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together from during shipping from Italy. And, of course, I'm going to put that on there when I ship to you. And again, this is the Ray-Ban 3016 Clubmaster color W0365 in the 51 eye size. It don't get no more classic than that. Yeah, I know. My, my English don't get no more better than that either, too. But um, we're going to take out that. We're going to add the gold lenses to match the gold trim on the frame. And we're going to see how that goes. I'm going to take my Phillips head screwdriver, do a little bit of lefty-loosey. So I can take out the original glass lenses, tighten that back up, do the same thing on this side. Did I take it out enough? Nope. I'm trying to avoid taking the screw out all the way, which I just did. Do not want to drop this screw. So tighten back up. So what I'm going to do is Put your frame into the tracing element of my blocker and hit start. The little stylus is going to pop up. Go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. <coughs> Excuse me. My receipt has my federal ID tax number on there. So if you have vision insurance, you will receive your out of network reimbursement because I am an out of network provider. Now, if you're using health savings account flex dollars like David did, I can take that over the phone. I use PayPal through the website, but PayPal does not take health savings account flex dollars. So I'll need to call you on the phone to take your payment and you'll get 100% reimbursement back on that. So we're going to move on to the next screen. Let's enter your pupillary distance of 61, which is 30.5 in each eye. The computer starts at 32.5. So I'm going to tap the minus button until we get there. I want to raise the optical center height up to 24. And let me write that down. We're going to go two above and cut at 24. <coughs> Sorry, I got a tickle in my throat. It's that time of year. So this is a block, or by now, you know I like to call it Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I've got two double-sided adhesive stickers here. The black side is the sticky side. We're going to stick this onto the first block. Do the same thing now for the second one. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. 
on the back that silver button is a magnet it's going to do its job twice the first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm oh but first i got to come down and get your lenses blocked your right eye reads minus two minus one and a quarter at 168 let's turn the axis wheel to 168 not 178 168 make sure everything is on zero now we can put the power drum on minus two now sometimes these are marked or not so i'm just gonna have to guess i could probably guess by thickness this one seems a little well let's just see and put it in on minus two rotate until the spherical component comes into view it does not so let's do that with this one oop i'm seeing something and it's upside down so let me turn it that way there we go so we're at minus two let me check your astigmatism correction we ended up at three and a quarter minus two minus one and a quarter three and a quarter at 168 we is good so i'm gonna put three dots on your lenses the third dot is always hard to see this pen is supposed to be right here so i'm gonna put these dots on there one dos quattro i'm gonna mark that one right let's do the same thing now for the left turn the axis wheel to 10 put the power drum on minus two and a quarter and then this one should come into focus there we go make sure i'm using the top part of the lens i am minus two and a quarter just find the center check the astigmatism correction 275 that's correct and we're going to put the three dots on there one two ocho and then this is the left lens now if you guys missed any of that let me recap <laughs> I'm telling you, that joke is not very well. I feel like Beetlejuice. I've told that joke 3,752 times, and it keeps getting funnier every time I tell it. I've actually told it 2,342 times here, over 10,000 times more in another place. So the reason why I put those three dots on there, it tells me that the lens is oriented and they're just perfectly due to your astigmatism and pupillary distance. If your lens were spherical, it literally could rotate and the lens was round it literally could rotate and you would see the same it has to go in this way for you to be 2020 that blue cross is the geometric center of your frame your eyes just above that and in inset so put those three dots on that line the orange graph just like the crosshairs of a scope i measure vertically and horizontally i just want to check to make sure the lens is large enough and it is it's just something i like to do you guys mind if i do that Hit that button, the arm's going to come down place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right. Whoop, 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 whoop. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet. Same pupillary distance, same optical center height. Same way I want to check to make sure the lens is large enough. Get everything lined up perfectly. Hit that button, the arm's going to come down place the block onto the left lens now this is the edger this is what costs forty thousand dollars it weighs 200 pounds i recommend everyone go out buy one yourself and then you can cut your own lenses at home and you won't need this guy with the two thumbs to do it for you but the actual cutting wheel is this diamond crusted wheel that's going to grind away your lens material until it's a final size that wheel in the center is going to put the v-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the negative v bevel in the frame let's go ahead and wake everything up job id number two three four two two three four two these are polycarbonate lenses if they were plastic high index plastic or trivex i would select that i'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen i'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens x i am going to put one i could do a light bevel or a heavier bevel i'm going to do a heavy bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens by the way i used to have a video game in my home called heavy barrel any of you guys remember that one so we're going to press the magnet on there with the the block on there firmly now the magnet's going to do a job a second time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck 
or by now you know I like to call it the Charles. So let's just go ahead. I'm going to pull this off. Let me introduce you guys to Chuck. That's Chuck. There's a mirror in a mirror, a magnet in there, and that's what it holds into and turns around and cuts. Bye, Chuck. Put that back in there. Chuck has an opposite side, which is a rubber block that goes and holds your lens in place while it is cutting so it doesn't slip. And if you guys are really, this is really hard rubber, you will see this thing swell. It clamps on there so tight. And, but let's do that. Place the magnet into the Charles. Hit the green start button. Now that black rubber piece on the right, watch when it goes against the lens and it actually swells up from the pressure. The door closes, the clamp's gonna shut. Can you see that? Now the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And it's tracing the shape of the right lens first. And then the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once, is measuring the thickness of the lens to automatically place the bevel where to give you the best cosmetic look possible. Now I could override that. Someone left me a comment on YouTube today asking me why do I let it do that all the time and I do override it for stronger powers. For sunglasses, I move the lens backwards in the frame. I could move the lens forward, not that I want to, but I could. Generally, I move it backwards to hide the thickness of the lens, of which you'll barely have any. Now, the light you see flickering in the background is water to catch the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, meaning that no water sprays onto the lens while it is cutting. Unlike plastic, high-index plastic and Tribex, they all cut wet meaning that water sprays on them for the duration. Now, water will spray onto your lens, but only for the last 20 seconds to wash away any optical debris that you may see beginning to form. As I mentioned, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. These are high-impact ballistics-grade lens material, the same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel from flying debris. Now, if you notice your lens is completely flat, it's just going to double check where to place the bevel. It's going to go onto the middle wheel next to get the V-shaped bevel. Now, it also has 100% UVA and UVB protection. You have the Transitions Extra Active that doubles. It actually gives you 50 to 70% blue light protection. And we know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays will do to your skin where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun. They're in North Tonawanda, um, which is an old Indian word for living next to a tourist attraction that uses gravity to make water fall. <laughs> I believe that's what it means. So water is spraying onto the lens, which tells me it's in the last 20 seconds. Now you got the Transitions Extra Active Gray with the gold flash mirror. It's available in six colors, silver, gold, green, blue, red, or pink. You got the gold. Now what's unique is it looks like you have the mirror on both sides. You do not, it's just how that reflects. When I activate them, you will see the green anti-glare coating on the back of the lens once it gets dark. So in just a moment, I will open this door with my mind. If you like that, I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can, I just gotta stare at it for a couple hours. The only thing I can't do is think of new jokes. If you can think of a funny joke, write it down on a hundred dollar bill and mail it to me and I will read it on the air and give you credit. You don't even have to include your name. I'll recognize your handwriting and give you credit for that joke. So I'm going to do, so here's the thing in the future, David, should you ever need new lenses for this frame, you're going to need a small Phillips head screwdriver. You need a baking dish, glass pan, metal pan, it doesn't matter, but take a t-shirt which will be played by the part of a paper towel. Put it in the baking dish because as you loosen the screw, let's go ahead and take it out all the way. If this were to fall out, it hits something soft and lands. If this were to hit a table, it would bounce, fall on the floor. They're very hard to find, trust me from experience. 
so that's why I have something there to catch the screw. It will always bounce against something hard. It will land on something soft. So we're going to take the lens, tuck it in, use my thumb to line up where the metal eye wire goes into the frame, take the gold screw, hold the frame down close in the tray. So if it were fall, it doesn't fall far and want to bounce. Take your Phillips head screwdriver, do a little bit of righty tighty, and we are good. That is in there. I see a little more optical sawdust I can clean off with my thumbnail though. So let's go ahead and start cutting the left lens. We're going to flip that over to L, place the magnet into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky Baby, the Chuckarama, the Chucky Roo Roo, the Chuck Stir. Did I say that one already? The Chucky 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 Chikika. All right, that's Monty Python reference. Or today I'm calling it the David. Hit the start button. The door closes. The clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced again by the two white styluses, this time tracing the left side. And you can see as it's going around tracing that shape. And just like before, measuring the thickness of the lens to automatically place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Look at that. Look at that, David. You got nothing. You got nothing there. You see what I'm telling you? So we're going to take this block off. Go ahead and peel the sticker away. Use my hand approved drying method. Throw that back in there. Add to my sticker collection. In fact, let's see what we can do to repair some of this. These are peeling off. It was coming off the bottom from where it sits on the table. Okay, let's press down on that one. And let's see if we can fix this flap by pinning that down. There we go. So, we're going to come down here to the lensometer, put the axis wheel on 168, put it in over that black dot, read the power I am getting, minus 2 in the red. Now, the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. It starts at zero and goes up or down in quarter increments. Minus a quarter, minus 50, minus 75, one. You're on the eighth rung of a ladder. You are nearsighted with your glasses off. You can see your fingerprint like it ain't nobody's business. But once it gets beyond arm's reach, everything starts to get fuzzy. So that's why there's a minus sign. Your lens is minify an image to the correct size far away. Now once it's the correct size, you still have five steps, one and a quarter diopters of astigmatism correction. You're on the eighth rung of a ladder for size, and now you're on the 13th rung total power. You have a minus two this way, 90 degrees away, you have another one and a quarter diopter, which is stronger, more, more minus. It's another one and 1.25 in addition to the two here. And it's how we line those two curves up to make everything nice and crisp. So let me read the power of the second curvature. And I'm getting three and a quarter. That's because, remember high school algebra where you add two like signs together? Yeah, nobody does. Let's use today's terms. Someone borrowed $2 from you, then they borrowed another $1.25. They would owe you $3.25 total. That's where we're at, $3.25 in the red. $3.25 in the red. Now, your left eye needs nine steps of far-sighted correction, but only two steps of astigmatism correction. Now, these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180. Um, but what's unique, you would think 10 and 168 are very far from each other. Think of it, the axis as the fine-tune knob. 0 to 90 to 180. Your axis for your right eye is 168, which is 12 degrees away from the 180. Your left eye is 10. So here you're 12 degrees away from the 180 meridian. Here you're 10 degrees away from the 180 meridian. So really it's only two degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon and your prescription. I believe that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go to school for this. I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express. Oh, look at that, look at that. I love it when it comes off in one piece. Normally in my old days, I would scrape it all off and then onto the counter and then once it was on the counter I would collect it neatly into one pile and then wipe it on the floor. 
but my wife just told me she hates it when I do that. Even though she doesn't clean, she just thinks it looks bad on me. And I said, honey, you know what looks bad on you? You marrying me. You try and explain that to people in polite conversation. But since I love my wife very much, I'm going to throw it in the trash. I mean, literally, who has time? See how quick that is? Who has time to go over here? That, that's asking it all. It's a good thing I love my wife a lot. So, we're going to come down here, put the paper towel back into the baking dish. Do a little bit of lefty loosey. Now, if you're really good, now you do have to take them out almost all the way to take the breakable glass lenses out. You're getting unbreakable lenses, so you don't have to take the screw all the way out. And I hold the frame upside down so the screw cannot fall out. That way, gravity is going to keep it from doing that. Try to tuck the lens in all the way around. It snaps in. So I never had to worry about the screw falling out. But that's just, a, you know, it's taken me years to learn that technique. If you have to do that, go ahead and get a baking dish and a paper towel or dish towel just to make sure it doesn't go flying away. Bouncing away, I guess, technically. Throw that off. Ooh, ooh, look, that's peeling away again. Let's stick this on there. Let's use that sticker right there. Let's take that off. See if we can do this one. It takes a village of stickers. Maybe I should just do them like that make that the new bottom and this will be the top. Did I mention I have OCDs and I should be concentrating on the work that I should be doing? <laughs> I mean, after all, he's paying for all this stuff. Okay, let's come down here, turn the axis wheel, the fine tune knob to 10. We were on 168. Let's turn it 12 degrees to the 180 meridian, which will be played by zero. Now we can turn it 10 degrees to there to 10. Put it in over that black dot, read the power. I'm getting minus two and a quarter, one tick more go going away from two towards three. We're gonna keep going towards three. Check the half a diopter, the minus 50. Ooh. No, the caffeine hasn't worn off, why do you ask? And now I'm one tick mark away from three. Two and a quarter minus 50, 275, 275. This is known as final inspection. This is known as silly. <laughs> this is known. Nyuck. Okay, never mind. Um, so your PD is 61. Turn the card around. Place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens. When we read the left lens, we're getting 61 millimeters. So that is cut perfectly. Your optical center height is 24. Not to the bottom of the lens, but to the middle of the metal at the deepest part of the frame. We're getting 24 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. 24 millimeters, that is cut perfectly. Man, the, the guy with the bad jokes is pretty good. So this is the portion of every video that as I clean your lenses. Hang on, before I get to that. This frame, the Ray-Ban 3016 Clubmaster, the Icon, if you don't believe me, listen to your case. No, wait, there it is. The Icon, ooh, that's so tempting to throw that on the floor. Don't tell my wife. All right, I'll put it in there. But sells for $150. Single vision polycarbonate transitions extra active in either gray or brown. Adds $129.99. The gold flash mirror, whether you get silver, gold, green, blue, red, or pink, adds $69.99 for a total of $349.98 tax free. I say that now because I'm in North Carolina. A lot of people on the internet are having to charge tax on glasses. I am in North Carolina. North Carolina considers eyeglasses a medical device. My state has no tax on medical devices, so I'll, I can't say I will always be tax-free, but until my state changes that, everybody's purchase is always going to be tax-free. Now, I do want to mention that as I clean your lenses, that when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance these could fit too loose, oops, the other way, too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take off my Ray-Bans and press down, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. I did what David did. 
I took the Ray-Ban 2132 new Wayfarer. Mine happens to be color 6053 in the 52 eye size. I took out the original sunglass lenses, installed my progressive transitions with uh, Crizal Sapphire lenses. When I go outside, these turn dark. Now, I'm going to be getting some new lenses for these things soon. But that's what we did here. We took out the original sunglass lenses and put in these lenses, which will turn dark. Now, I send out a selfie request in every package to have your selfie on the website. David, I would love two, pack, two selfies. One inside with them clear. One outside when they turn gold. And uh, that'd be awesome. I also send out cleaning instructions, not only for your frame and lenses, but for the premium microfiber cleaning cloth that I provide, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth and your case so it too will last you for years no other seller does that on the internet i am told so again with the lenses clear i have the crizal sapphire you can see the blue on mine your flash coating just looks like it's an anti you have a gold anti-glare coating on the lens where mine looks blue most crizal coatings are green the provencia is purple this gives you a gold color now watch what happens when I turn them dark. Now as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now this is important, David and everyone else listening, all transition lenses will turn dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks they're exposed to the sun. After that they will work for years at maximum performance. Look at that, look at that. And uh, now you can see the green anti-glare coating on the back surface of the lens. It went from gold to green. It's always going to be gold on the front and certain lighting at certain angles. And as I keep talking, this is going to get lighter and lighter. But as I mentioned, um, now, the only time that Transition 7 and Generation 8 and Zeiss Photochromic or Photofusion lenses don't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day. Now, the Transition's extra active will get 30 to 50% dark behind a windshield. So will the Zeiss Photofusion Extra. And that gold matches the gold trim on here. Really nice. This was a good choice, David. Thank you so much. Um, for giving me the opportunity to show everyone how nice this combination looks. The gold flash mirror with any gold aspect of your frame. This is known as the shield. It is the back side of the rivet that holds the hinge on. So this is the front of the shield that, that goes through those two pins. This is crimped on there when you rivet it down. Same thing on this side, the other side of the hinge. This is... A triple barrel hinge. I can't tell what, um, what, what you guys can see or not, but that hinge that is in there, of course, Ray Ban made in Italy. Very good, very sturdy hinge on both sides. Oops, I guess when my finger's not there, you can see that. But and again, I can't tell what you guys can see. I apologize for that if anything's out of view. But um, all transitions and photochromic lenses are temperature sensitive, meaning they will get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But I remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. We all work much better when it cools off. Now, having said that, the Transitions Extra Active or the Zeiss Photochromic Gray Extra will get darker in hotter weather. It's designed for extra active people who spend extra amounts of time outside. And of course, as I keep talking, you will see these get lighter and lighter. Now, when you look out, you will see the gray or the brown. You chose gray. You chose wisely. Well played, sir. When people look at you, they will still see some of that gold mirror, the flash mirror. Once you come back inside, that mirror effect greatly minimizes and people will see your eyes again. Outside, they're just not going to see your eyes. But um, do me a favor, not only like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the bell icon so you'll be notified as future videos come out with different frame and lens combinations. You might find something you like. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as free prescription lenses. Uh, yeah, I was about to say dot com, but free prescription lenses on Facebook and Instagram as well as Twitter, except my username is free RX lenses because that username was too long for Twitter. But if you have any questions about what I can or can't do, um, go to the contact me page of the website. 
just email me your question. I'll get back to you. You can also leave a question or comment in the comment section below. David, and let me pronounce this again, North Tonawanda, just outside Niagara Falls. Thank you so much for the purchase of the Ray-Ban 3016 Clubmaster, size 51. This frame comes in a 51 and a smaller 49 eye size. It comes in about 10 to 12 colors. This is color W0365, which is the classic shiny black with the gold trim. There's an all matte black frame, but it only comes in the 49 eye size. Um, you can't get it in the 51. But it comes in, you know, classic tortoise and gold. There's now a red tortoise, a blue tortoise, some other colors you can't go wrong with it. But, yeah, thank you for the purchase of the frames. And now hopefully everyone else has got a chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.